All right, YouTube. Um, today I'd like to talk about what's called an IQ modulator. Now, in my previous videos, and I highly encourage you to subscribe to my channel, I talked about two amplitude uh, AM signals that I made. And I made one of the AM radio signals at uh, minus 12 kilohertz carrier, and I made another guy at plus 12 kilohertz carrier. And uh, omega zero is two pi times 12 kilohertz. Now for those of you that may wonder or ask yourself, well, what the heck is this negative frequency? Um, you know, how do we really work with that in the real world? And just for completeness here, here is the, uh, the AM radio equation that describes this spectrum up here. Here's our first term, M of one, multiplied by our negative phasor, which puts the signal over here, plus this guy, which is our second message signal, and he's times the positive e to the j omega zero t, and his spectrum is up here. Now the thing I want to take away from you is let's break up in this equation the real terms and the imaginary terms. The imaginary terms will designate as Q, and the real terms we will designate as I. So knowing that, knowing that we take all of the real numbers in this equation and we define them as I, and all the imaginary numbers in this equation, we're going to define them as Q. So knowing that, how can we make this become a real world signal that you would transmit out your antenna? And the answer to that is right here. It's called an IQ modulator and hopefully you can see that. So we have our I term here multiplied by the cosine omega zero. So this omega zero in this case would be whatever the carrier frequency you want. So if you wanted this spectrum right here centered around DC, if you wanted this to come out at 100 kilohertz, well, in this equation, you would make that omega zero be 100 kilohertz, two pi times 100 kilohertz to do that equation. So the I parts or all the real values of the AM equation would go here. All the imaginary or complex parts uh, would go here from the AM equation. And when they get multiplied, the real parts will get multiplied by the cosine of the 100 kilohertz carrier the imaginary parts would get multiplied by the sine of that 100 kilohertz carrier. They would get added together, and this is now your final RF output. And you're gonna have a signal here at 100 kilohertz. So for completeness, here is what I was talking about. We're taking our real parts of the AM waveform, and we're gonna call that I. We're going to take the imaginary parts of our AM waveform, we're going to call that Q, and we're going to put all this spectrum, that what I, this spectrum here is what I was describing as what's called baseband IQ. And we're going to modulate that up to this 100 kilohertz carrier by using this thing called an IQ modulator. So if we look at this final output right here, this is the spectrum that's going to come out. DC now is 100 kilohertz. The minus 12 carrier that I was talking about in the AM equation now is going to come out at 88 kilohertz, 100K minus 12K. And the positive 12 kilohertz carrier I was talking about is going to come out now at 112 kilohertz, which is 100K plus 12K. So this now is how this signal comes out in the real world. So if you were to tune your radio to 88 kilohertz, you would hear the one AM waveform. If you were to tune your radio to 112 kilohertz, you would hear the second AM radio waveform. So I hope this explains how we took those AM equations that I was talking about, namely uh, these guys here, how we take this abstract equation with these complex phasers in them and actually get a real valued uh, signal here. 
which, which is what we do here. And the beauty of this is we can change this carrier. We could make this carrier be one megahertz. And now this would become one megahertz and the AM signal here would be one megahertz plus 12 kilohertz. And the AM signal here would be one megahertz minus 12 kilohertz. So simply by changing these cosine and sine carrier terms puts this spectrum anywhere we want. The math back here does not need to change. The equations back here stay the same because they're what's called baseband. They're centered around DC. And to change the frequency, all we need to do is change the term in here. Now I should note, in today's world, all this math is done in DSP. There's a final DAC here, and then that would convert it finally to the, uh, to the real world. So hopefully you guys can see here how we can take those AM signals I was talking about in the previous video and actually have them be outputted into the real world. Um, if you have any questions, always email me or give me a comment. And uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'll probably be putting a few more videos out, maybe on FM and things like that. So. Hopefully that answered some of you guys' questions about how you take these complex equations I was writing and actually implement them to, into the real world as a real valued signal. Thanks for listening, and uh, as always, if you like what you're seeing here, subscribe to my channel.